Hi, everybody. This is Joy Lachere. I have with me Joel Astley with us. He's quite an interesting uh, artist. And we will be starting shortly. But I do want to introduce, uh, at least welcome him to the program. Well, I'm glad you're here, Joel. It's been it's a while. Here. Yeah. In the making. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he is the first person since we hit a thousand. He brought some extra people in. And I hit my thousand. Uh, I guess, uh, goal on Mature Musicians Group. And thank you all very much for that. Before, oh, there's that sun. <laughs> you yes. actually remove every now and then. But anyway, um, I do want to thank all of you for being members and hope you enjoy today's show. It is being sponsored by the Luscious Moss Studio, owned and operated by Chad Christ in Edgewood, uh, Washington. And he's got a setup there that's very collaborative, and uh, he caters to drummers and guitarists, but he also produces uh, CDs as well. He is definitely there producing mine. So you can find him on Facebook, uh, either through Luscious Moss or Chad Kristen Edgewood. And with that, I want to start this program with Joel. We do have someone who's just made a comment, and it says, hello, Joel. Uh, welcome to the group. <laughs> Awesome. And, and once again, anybody who makes comments, um, I would like you to leave your name because we can't see you if you don't. We don't know who you are. I wonder if I can change this so that I can see it. Oh, Don Malador said, hi, Joel. Welcome to the group. Donald. So uh, Don just moved oh, away. I can't see you, Donald. Sorry. I can't read <laughs> oh. between last week and this week. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't see the comments and see you at the same time. Oh, okay. Okay, oh. I'll, I'll keep my eye on it for us. <laughs> so I do want to ask you, Joel, how you got started. Um, what is your background in music? And and I know that you play the harmonica, which is, um, you know, quite a talent. I, I, I've seen a few, a handful of harmonica players, and I'm like lost. It's like, oh, my God, how did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> so you're on with telling your story. Yeah, yeah. There's only 10 holes. How are they getting so many notes? Uh, yeah, I was um, taken immediately when I started listening to the blues in high school. And <clears throat> I was I was just drawn to the instrument. And um, I was hanging out with some guys who got into music. And uh, my best friend picked up the drums. My other best friend picked up the bass. And uh, I knew if I didn't get musical quickly i was going to fall out <laughs> as you know if if you're uh if you're friends with any drummers um they have a very unique relationship with with bass players and when these two guys started to um get into music their minds just kind of started to knit together you know, on and off the stage and so i was like all right i have to find something so i would sing you know we would just be jamming in dave's basement and uh there's always a microphone set up. So I just jump on there and sing whatever we were doing. And, but I didn't feel like that was an instrument. I didn't think that that was, that that made yeah. me. An yes, it is. <laughs> it is. It is. I have learned, I've come to find out that, that it's a very delicate instrument. You have to take good care of. Uh, but I didn't realize that it was an instrument in itself. And so I felt like, well, I need to do something else to qualify me. You know, I got to be in the club, right? So I already had a, a harmonica. So I started learning how to play it. And I was pretty terrible for a long time. And so I just didn't really put the time in. I didn't practice. Yeah. Right. Um, around that same time, I got really into artwork. Um, visual arts um, is is my first, my first love, my first passion. And I was like all the way in for my teens, my 20s into my thirties, I was painting pictures. That is who I was, what I did. And um, up until a friend of mine took me to a blues jam ah. and um, the bug bit and the rest is history. I started going to these blues jams every week and then I was looking for another one. I was going to blues jams two times a week and then I was going to everyone I could find. <laughs> and um, then it was just a matter of time before I Put my own band together and jim mclaughlin oh so go when, ahead. when was this um 
when did you when, what what kind of give me some kind of frame of age um not to give away your age but you know okay. some idea of what part you know what um, time of your life this this all was like number right. one when you discovered the harmonica your painting and then your first blues jump okay uh well so i've been painting and drawing since whenever since since <laughs> i was a kid and in high school i really latched onto it as um you know a critical piece of self-expression um and i stuck with that exclusively that was my mode of expression for mm, 10 15 years and in my early 30s i started dabbling in music that was when i started kind of uh when, when i started going to blues jams and um i was i think i was about 38 or 39 when i finally pulled the trigger and put a band together and uh, Jim McLaughlin has a festival every year called Freedom Fest. It's yes, here. that's where I met you, Joel. Yes, that's right. That was my first gig, 2014. And um, that, uh, so I, I put together a band with some guys that I knew from another project that I had been kind of um, tangentially associated with. I was a kind of a guest musician in this other band. So I called them up and we put together a set and we did Freedom Fest. And uh, shortly after that, I started writing my own songs and um, uh, the Blue Society has recognized me with, with some awards since yes, then. Yes, you have some nice awards. <laughs> yeah, some very, um, very um, um, encouraging. It's been yeah. really encouraging to have a, to know that I'm finding an audience. You know, we can shoot arrows into the air or you can shoot them at a target or you can just shoot them and then find out later they hit a target. Yes. And uh, so I've, I've won the, their, their harmonica award a few times, mm -hmm. the vocalist award a few times, the singer um, uh, song, the songwriter award two times, which has been the, the most special for me. It's, it means that people are listening to my words. Right, exactly. It's right. the most, yeah, it's just fantastic. So, um, well, congrats. I, I think that um, that that's definitely a feather in your cap, to, oh. so to speak. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we do have some comments before we go on to um, a little bit more of your background. Uh, we've got uh, Donald and then uh, Lorraine Wolf uh, is saying hi here. Um, and and this song under did yeah she said we worked hard to be here today oh good <laughs> uh, uh lori lori wolf and then don said uh joel is it is phenomenal I, i'm sorry i i my screen is so small um <laughs> uh, a phenomenal harmonica player uh have you ever played with jim mclaughlin oh yeah and uh been to Abbey Freedom Fest for years, and uh, he said he recorded you a few times. Donald uh, likes to take videos of uh, the bands. And finally, the Patrick from Dublin Abbey. Hi, Patrick. I haven't seen you for a while. You've been missing in action. And he said, when you're songwriting, uh, do you use instruments other than the harmonica to write your own songs? Yeah, that's interesting. That's that's a good question yeah yeah um and i think everybody wants to know how the sausage is made they want to see they want to look behind the curtain <laughs> these songs just kind of come out of nowhere you know and sometimes it's um sometimes it hits me like a bolt of lightning sometimes it's more like i'm you know digging up a tree a, a tree tree root uh, <laughs> <laughs> i know, can relate <laughs> dump out of the yard you know yeah. Just don't know how deep some of those verses are going to go. Yeah. And then yeah, other yeah. times it's like it, they, it, they write themselves. You know? <laughs> exactly. Little, it'll, it'll be like one line. I'll be doing the dishes and then the song will be written by the time I'm done. <laughs> you know, or I'll be on the way to the gig and, and some little tag, some little catch, some hook will pop into my head. And um, so to answer your question more directly, um, <clears throat> I, I sometimes use the harmonica, um, but usually the words come um, right out of my head first before the melody, before the melody 
really um, solid. Um, and when I do use the harmonica, it's it's only occasionally, and usually it's just to um, kind of realize what I was already hearing in my head. Right. So um, I'm I'm a little bit. I use my guitar and to write the chords. So. Um, I can't even imagine. Do, do you just know from the melody uh, what, what notes to play, or I mean, how does that how does that fit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a little it's a little mysterious for me as well. Um, it's very much like painting, uh, in the sense that it's you know a blank canvas right. when I start, but I can already kind of see um, see it before it's there, uh, and then. Um, it just kind of comes into focus, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. Um, and uh, I think what what I what I've come to what I've come to to learn about my songwriting is that I, I'm not as in control <laughs> as um, as I thought I was. <laughs> that the harder I try to write a song, the harder it is to write a song. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, it's it's just like. It's like a, a hand, you know. If it's if it's too tight, there's no room for anything to to, to land in it. Right. And so it's like if I stay out of the way, the song will come through me. And not to get too woo woo about it, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, so the melody. Um, I love music. I I love listening to music. I I. I'm a terrible fan though. I don't look at the liner notes. I sometimes I, you know, like I met a guy from one of the bands that I just followed in my teens. And I, I met a guy and I was talking to him and and um, you know, we had like a half an hour conversation before before it came out that he was in this band that I was just totally into when I was a, a, a teen. And I just, just never even looked at the pictures or the liner notes. I didn't recognize him. It's like Yeah. I'm a terrible fan and, and it's got kind of in an awkward position now that I'm the one on stage because I, um, you know, fandom is, uh, it's like these, it's these people that I really care about who are in my life now and they came through the art to me. Yeah, to you. And you know what I mean? Yes, I, I do. I mean, that's, that's really, that's how it works, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, anyway. if you, if you go into the, um, comments uh you were saying you can't see something but i'd like you to go in there because there's quite a few of them in there and i hope that answered patrick's question um if not patrick let us know and i think i hit someone wrote it i can't read these joel i'm sorry oh, but they're very, uh, very small poems is like giving birth they come out of their own accord it just says facebook user so yeah. I would absolutely you are let us know. That was an interesting comment. I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. <laughs> All right. So where were we in your story? We were talking about you had gone to a blues jam with a friend and you were so captured by blues that you um you just took off as far as your music. Yeah, I, I was already captured by blues before that. Huh. But when I realized what was happening on the stage with me and other people who were all kind of doing something towards this piece of art, it was uh, it was irresistible. <laughs> now, how do you now? Can you show us some of your art and then answer the question as to how you combine the two? I mean, obviously, there's there's some creativity flow within you that just yeah, it's working, yeah. always working. Sure, I, I'd love to. Um, so let me let me preface it first by saying that I've kind of been like right on the outskirts of music for a very long time. Like right before um, right before I got married, I was working at a jazz club as a cook which I, I loved. I love cooking. I love all that. Um, I love being in the kitchen. It's another form of creativity. Yes, right? it is. <laughs> it was this great jazz club that had music seven nights a week. And just, it was like this constant stream of creative energy going through my ears in one ear, out the other, and leaving this, this mm -hmm. like, you know, this residue inside my skull. And um, on the slow nights, I would go out to the back table um, right by the kitchen door and um, 
sketch all the musicians. And so, I mean, I can, I can remember all of these um, archetypal um, piano postures, saxophone playing postures, trumpet postures. And, um, you know, now they're just, they're just deep in my, in my brain. Um, here's a, here's I'm going to, I'm going to get out of here so they can see this oh, as you oh, present okay. Joel. So hang on a minute. All right. So it's, it's in a plastic sleeve. So I apologize for the, the glare here. Um, this is a trumpet player, obviously. And um, this is a, it has a companion piece. This is a trombone, trombone player. Um, this is based on a friend of mine. He had a, a real, um, a real definitive posture that he would strike when he was playing. And so this is for Jeff. Um, and uh, I, I also did a lot of, um, you know, animals and, and uh, just all kinds of things. This is all, um, these are pictures, the pictures that I'm showing you are, are from uh, the pandemic. And I know that Joy, you wanted to talk about that a little yeah, later. Yeah, I did. You know, but I want to comment on these pictures. I love them. There was a couple of them that you did. I can't remember right now what it was. Uh, one was the guitar that I oh. absolutely loved. Uh, there are a couple of others, but um, those are great. Would you, how would you, um, how would you define your art? It is sort of abstract, it's but sort not of really. Abstract. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like I've created my own style. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I will, I will confess to every, um, every um, source, every inspiration. Um, Picasso is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, that's I, what you reminded me of. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of the mid-century abstracts, you know, Kandinsky, Miro, um, even Dolly. Well, I went into this real deep Dolly phase around the, my early 20s, and um, I was really into the surrealism and, mm -hmm. and um, all of the Impressionists, the Fauve movement after that for their color. Um, Cezanne, just for all the cubism, Brock, uh, just all of the, I'm, I guess I'm pretty traditional when it comes to my inspirations. I like the, the, um, the abstract cubist mid-century stuff. So now what are you using, uh, Joel? I, I, I don't mean uh, to interrupt you, but what, what are you using? Is that the pencils or? Oh, uh, or well, the one that I showed you. These are uh, ink drawings that have been watercolored. Uh, so here's an ink drawing with no uh, with no color. Oh, so it's, I look like a drummer. Yeah. Well, drummer. kinda. Yep. Um, and and um, but I I've worked in all sorts of of media. Um, uh, I I've kind of landed on watercolor just because it's so easy. I fell into yeah. watercolor when we had kids. Um, I got away from the toxic. Um, oil yeah. painting yeah. at that time. Uh, I had one one kind of final show when our first um, when our first kid was like two. That was kind of my final oil show. And after that, I got more into. Uh, I tried acrylics. I didn't like it. Um, and I know there's artists in in the room that are going to say, "Well, it's just like oil. You just have to get the right solvents." But yeah. for whatever reason, I didn't care for it i think it's probably because i was just moving away from the from the oil medium as well yeah. and so i was ready to move on to paper watercolor um and i i love paper i love working in paper i love working uh i in fact i took some of my old sketchbooks and i i threw them in a blender with a bunch of water and glue <laughs> and made this modeling pulp yeah. And I was sculpting with it and I just wow. <laughs> I found a, I just recently found it. So I'll show it to you. Hang on, just right here. So I just recently found this guy. He's just um oh my gosh. He's uh he's made out of this uh paper modeling pulp. Oh, it's it, old sketches. So all of this was made from uh the pages um of old sketchbooks. Creative. 
That is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. You had a show um, during COVID. I searched around to try to keep myself from being totally bored. And I found your show and I started watching it. And I'd like to know if you still do stream. Um, he would he would play music and um, and show his art and so forth. And uh, it was an hour show, wasn't it, uh, uh, Joel? Yeah, and it was because people were getting bored, and to keep from getting bored, they would go online and look for stuff to do. And Absolutely. I, I, all of my friends um, were well, all my guitar playing friends, Rod Cook, C.D. Woodbury, all of these great <laughs> musicians who can have a one person um, concert from their homes. Right. They did just that, and they posted a virtual tip jar, and that's what they replaced their gigs with. Right. Um, I was lucky and my job went, um, went on. I, I didn't get laid off. I didn't get furloughed. Um, I worked through the pandemic, which meant that I didn't have to put tip jar out on my show <laughs> yeah. and it was there for everybody to just hang out. Right. And right. That's all we did. Yeah. And no longer do that. Is that, is that what's uh, going on now? So we can't find you anymore. Uh, yeah, I quit doing it about, oh God, it's been over a year since I, since I stopped. But Time I did goes know, by so fast. I know, I know. It was a lot of fun, and I made a lot of friends through that show. Um, I also used it uh, as a vehicle to um, to promote my friends' albums. Yes, I got so, a little trouble maybe for that. But <laughs> what's that? I said, did you get any trouble with that? No, I did. I did. I got into a little bit of trouble with Facebook because I was streaming live on Facebook, and they. Um, they would automatically detect the metadata in some of these albums, especially if the artist was more well known or if it had been out for a while. Um, but um, it was a great way to um, provide exposure for these artists, right. friends of mine. Yes. Uh, they made a lot of sales because of it. Yes. Uh, they made new fans because of the show. Um, I even ended up getting um, a couple of album cover um yes out of it so i got to I remember I, I, that. oh i've got one right here this is a this is an album cover i did for my friend kike gomez in a his little album. more to the oh, there there. We go. yeah we can see it now so uh, i did a did this album with little charlie Beatty and kid anderson and alex peterson um this is uh recorded in greaseland studios and uh, that's my art that was uh, commissioned by Kike. So that's um, something that kind of came out of the pandemic. So I guess the whole pandemic was was uh, a, was a really successful pivot for me. I moved back into my art before the pandemic. And so it was a really natural um, place for me to go. Right. Uh, that's um there's another lady out there uh <laughs> her name escapes me i need to get her on my show yeah. i guess <laughs> but anyway she does that too uh Is her she's name also Steph an artist huh stephanie Ooh. no okay no she has a band with her husband and i cannot heather i believe is her first name but i don't remember oh. her last name okay. yeah and it is amazing to me that um you guys can combine art and music, which is just a different form of art, uh, and, yeah. and come out where you guys are coming out. It's awesome. It's awesome. So I, this is probably a good time to look at our comments, Joel. There's a few in there. Oh, um, sure. And enough. Donald's asking if you have did anything psychedelic. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I definitely went through my psychedelic phase. Um, I don't really do that much psychedelic stuff anymore. Um, but yeah. Oh, he also mentioned the COVID shows. Yeah, they were all so good. And, and the fans really appreciated what the artists were doing. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. I think there's still a need for that kind of stuff, even though COVID's over. I, I think I see a, a movement from, um, you know, big studios and record companies and all the rest to this whole streaming um situation and you know I, I think that i don't know about anybody else but i get tired of television 
<laughs> if I'm not practicing or running around and I sit down to do something, I'd rather watch a stream than watch something on TV. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think I'm up to my ears and politics. So, <laughs> so I, um, I have to send my kid a message and tell oh. him to <laughs> okay. stop the dog from barking. <laughs> Can you guys hear? It? <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Oh. Uh, anyway, all right. I was hoping that I could find this thing on Facebook that they send me. I mean, YouTube that tells me the the program on YouTube is started. And and no, I can't. Uh, so anyway, if you if you are I know anybody who can't get in and still want to watch. Um, it will be posted in, even though it's not live after the show, both on my, here on Mature Musician, so on my Facebook page where you don't need to join, and on YouTube. So I just interview with Joel As Ashley. <laughs> Ashley. Oh, my goodness. I want to say Ashley. That's my granddaughter's name. <laughs> All right. So along with painting, I mean, not painting, but, yeah, watercolors are painting, right? Uh, sketching and, and watercolor your sketches um how did your how, how did your harmonica and songwriting uh work during that period of time did it shut you down a little bit or or did it actually add well covid was uh, was it, it was kind of just right right in time right on time for uh for me in a lot of ways uh, I know it was really, really hard on a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely sensitive to that. And I, I know that it wasn't easy for everyone and it wasn't easy on me either. Um, but I, I made the best of it and I took advantage of what it offered. And what it offered was a little bit of downtime. Um, and I, um, the, the timing was just right with uh, a friend of mine, Raphael Tranquilino, um, and we started getting together and, um, uh, we, we were able to, um, to do some recording and I got a bunch of my songs. In person or streaming? Yeah. I would go over to his house uh, once a okay. week and, um, and we would get together and, and, um, and get these songs, uh, kind of fleshed out, finished. And, uh, that, that really worked out really well, um, as far as the songwriting, um, I didn't respond to the pandemic uh, with my art as some some did. No, yeah. Uh, my friend Eric Rice is a wonderful. Uh, oh, I know Eric. Yep, he wrote. I played with album. him. Huh? Oh, yeah, if he so, goes. He wrote a whole album called "Stuck Inside." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and I did an album cover for that too. Oh, cool. I don't think I have one in handy though, Okay. Uh, but um, yeah, stuck inside. And every song was written during the pandemic. Oh and my really gosh. I, I want to hear that. How, where's he got it? Is, what, what's, a, um... It was released this year. So you can get, or last year now. Uh, so you can get it everywhere. Spotify, Apple okay, Music. Gotcha. Uh, I'll stream your platforms. I'm going to have to, do you know if he's on Amazon? Yes. Okay. I'll have to look at that. So are you going to play the harmonica for us today, Joel? Sure. I'd love to. All right. This is going to be a treat. I'm going to bow out when you start so they can see you. So just let me know when you're ready to go. All right. Sounds good. Oh, my gosh. My dog is driving me nuts. Yeah, somebody was asking. I think it was Don, uh, <laughs> Mellon Donald, if you had a dog there. <laughs> I think I've seen your dog in your show before. Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> he would pop in every once in a while, walk in, look around, turn around and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I'll, I'll do a little uh, instrumental thing that I just put together. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I haven't done that that many. I haven't done that many. There is an. Oh, sorry, Joel. What? Oh, I haven't really written that many instrumentals, but that's something that I'm kind of working on. So that's I thought, cool. I love it. Um, the reason Joel is singing for us today, right? Mm -hmm. Joel, you want to tell him? <laughs> oh. Well, I'm getting over a bug. and <laughs> gosh, I haven't been sick that much in my life, but I would say like since... Since COVID, I got COVID early in 2020. It was March of 2020, I got sick. And ever since then, I feel like I've been able to like catch everything that goes through. I've been sick, <laughs> yeah. more, been sick more times in the last three years than I have in my whole life put together, it feels like. And it's a little scary, honestly. I think it affected a lot of people and I know I had it too. I had it in January, just before March happened and on. 4th of July, 14th of July, which is uh, ah, February, which is Valentine's Day. I went to a gig in Duval with uh, Lynn Sorensen and Doug McGrew. And that was the first time I'd been out for months. But I had been at the Life Center. And and you remember that place. Uh, I, it's all over the news or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. And, and a lady came up to us. And I believe this was in December. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember anything anymore. But anyway, a uh, lady came up to set uh, our group. We were we were a volunteer band at Bothell, a senior group. And she, she said, I think we all have to leave. We seem to have the flu here. And I was <laughs> in January. I got sick. So. And, uh, you know, I've caught uh, several things at different times, but I've survived them. I don't know how, but I'm still here, Joel. I know. <laughs> so, that's how I feel. The like, key is you're still here, guy. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so when you, um, you know, we know a little bit about what you were doing during COVID and, and we know how you managed to put your music together. Was there any time or any or a lot of experiences or just one experience that was an aha moment where you said, I know I'm on the right track? Because I know all of us are all artists have <laughs> have those dark days and those, you know, question what they're doing and saying, you know, oh. do I really want to do this. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. I. <laughs> so the doubts are always corporeal. The yeah. doubts are always just, you know, they feel like a like a like a blunt instrument. It's like that voice telling you you can't do it, which I found recently is is installed in the mind and we need it. We need that voice telling us that we're not good enough because it inspires us to be to better. better. Yeah. But so it's it's actually by design that we have that voice and we just can't give it too much um uh power yeah. you know we can't give it control um so when Easier i you said than done joel <laughs> yeah so true yeah so that's the wrestling that's yeah. that's what we grapple with as artists you know and how do you counter that how do you how do you um do you have those experiences that just say oh my god i can't stop this i gotta it, keep going it's a sensation it's almost like a physical sensation um yes. where it's like i'm in warm water and i feel like i'm where i'm supposed to be um and uh i'm gonna try one more time to get the dog Texted my, texted my, go get her. He wants to be part of the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, sorry. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's the two voices, you know, the angel and the devil. Yeah. One saying, you are great. <laughs> yeah. And the devil is going, you ain't. <laughs> and, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and yeah. both, they both have my ear, right? Um, but, but the one is, is, is silent, right? The silent one is just a sensation. Mm -hmm. And when I'm doing my music or my art, or I'm, I'm in it and I'm honoring it and I'm, and I'm putting action into it, it is natural. It feels good. It's the right it's the it just feels right and the devil doesn't have those um 
tools. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> I agree. I, I usually, um, I get that from, from feedback, you know, when they think, oh my gosh, and I know I'm not alone. I know that other artists have experienced it too, where you have people coming up to you and saying things and you just think, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I've learned to just smile and say thank you because you never know what's going to reach somebody. Right. Um, I, you know, I've, I've played solos where I feel like, oh my gosh, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever played. <laughs> And then there's other times where I just feel like I'm missing or I'm just, just not in my zone and, <laughs> and the room just explodes or, <laughs> or more, or more often somebody will come up afterwards and say, say, wow, that, what you did on that one. And I'll, and I won't remember, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you heard something you liked. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. You know, well, I right. think that none of us would be able to do any of this out in public if it wasn't for the people out there supporting us and, and yes. giving us feedback and letting us know what kind of a, a reaction we're getting from them. You know, I have a I have kind of a hard time because after the people that I jam with are all rockers or blues people and <laughs> their crowd likes rock and blues and I get up there and sing country. I mean, <laughs> I just wait for the beer bottles to fly. <laughs> I can relate. I can relate because a lot of my songs are, are definitely outside of that, that blues canon. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I, well, I kind of feel like an outsider a lot of the time, yeah. you know, coming, <laughs> coming from the, yeah. Well, coming from the, the visual arts in particular, just a non-musical background altogether, you know, I feel like I'm kind of running for the bus a lot of time <laughs> and I have to be, you know, um, really really paying attention to keep up and you know my my peers keep saying no don't worry you you are where you're supposed to be you belong Absolutely. here I, I, I wish your voice was better because you have a beautiful voice first time i heard it i thought that guy his it sounds good oh well thank you you're welcome yeah I, I could probably do a little something for you oh great i don't want you to strain your voice so but if you well, feel I, up to it I put something together. I, I checked. I checked myself out before we started today. Okay, good. And I've what are you my, drinking? Does it make it better? What are you drinking there? Oh, I've got. Um, it's called Throat Coat. Ah, it's a, yeah. Does it even sound like it works? <laughs> great. Yeah, and then I put a little turmeric in it, a little cayenne, and um, that helps too. The turmeric mm. is uh, anti-inflammatory. Right. And the cayenne sends all the blood to this area here. like Because it's hot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So, you know, tricks, yeah, everybody's different. You know, there's going to be singers in this, watching this, that, that say, oh, no, you're going to ruin your voice drinking that cayenne. <laughs> different, everybody, no, you should use lemon. Well, lemon dry. <laughs> I can't do lemon. Yeah. Oh, you should then. Oh, I love using honey. I just don't like stirring it into the tea because it never quite does it right. And you know, every <laughs> black licorice. That's my oh, favorite. I love black licorice. Do oh, time I go to see my mom in Paulsbo, I grab as much as I can out of their little grocery store. <laughs> they have a market there that has like the best licorice selection. And I know she's here. Hi, mom. Where'd hey, you mom. grow up at? Where? Where? Hi, mom. <laughs> Where'd you grow up at? Uh, well, I grew up in North Seattle, not far from where I live. Oh, okay. Is that where I, the store is? No, it's that's out in Paulsbo. Okay. Yeah. So I'll sing you a little something. Okay. okay. So this is for all of you guys who watched my show during the pandemic. This is the one that I ended the show with. And I probably won't be doing the whole thing. I might. <laughs> No brighter gold in this world. No brighter gold in this world. When you find love, well, the sun will shine. No brighter gold you'll ever find. Now I have searched 
the hills and valleys yes i have searched the hills and valleys believe me i search high and low you'll never find no brighter gold Yes, I have searched the hills and valleys. Yes, I have searched the hills and valleys. Believe me, I search high and low. You'll never find no brighter gold. Now, when you find love, you'll start to sing. Yes, when you find love, you'll start to sing. Cause only love, only love can fill your soul. You'll never find no brighter gold. No brighter gold, 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 no brighter gold. Bravo! Thank you. I love it. Thank you, Joel. So, speaking of your songs and and your uh, work as a singer and songwriter, can you tell us what you've got coming up in the future? Uh, and number two, tell me if you can uh, what your goals are. Uh, what are you looking at in the next one to five years? One to five years. Okay, so one to five days. I'm going to be in, uh, at the Carolina Smoke Barbecue Shop in Bothell, Washington. Mm -hmm. um, that's Friday night. It's a five to eight show. So that's like a dinner show. So um, I have to check out his his menu. He's got wings, brisket sandwiches, that kind of stuff. Delicious Carolina style barbecue. Best in Bothell. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited. And I'm doing that show with C.D. Woodbury. And uh, C.D. Woodbury has his own band. Uh, it's kind of a, they call it a power trio. Um, lots of really great original music, great rock and blues. Um, he's an amazing front man. And uh, so we're going to team up and we're going to do a little, uh, a four piece. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Cool. Um, something came to mind when you said that. Can you put place on your uh, Matured Musicians, your website. Uh, if you have a YouTube channel, you YouTube channel and the things from time to time that are coming up so that we can see your schedule. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And okay. all that Matured Musicians group. And nice. um, if anybody knows me, I, I had to check first to make sure that I didn't have to be matured to be in this group. <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face. Like I was telling my kid about the group and i and i said i'm a turd <laughs> i'm a turd <laughs> oh that's so cute well that's it kind of how it started and then i thought no that's discriminatory so it kind of moved into music being matured but i didn't change the name because people were throwing it around and having such a good time with it <laughs> <laughs> having a sense of humor i liked it but uh, yeah, that and and uh, I don't know if you know Lynn Sorensen or not. No, no, um, he's a bass player. We, I think we've crossed paths once yeah. or twice. 
Yeah. Well, he's always teasing me about having a counter to matured musicians. And he okay. said, I'm starting the immature musicians group. So check it out. I don't think it's real. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we've got a few more comments. Do you want to address oh, any of them before we move on to your records and anything else that you've got coming up? Yeah. Throat coat is amazing stuff. Yes. Bread of gold. Somebody said, Brighter Gold is one of my favorites. Oh, thank you. Oh, I did release that song. Well, unofficial release. It was the B-side of my Christmas album. Which one? Well, my Christmas single. No, the name of the song. Uh, no Brighter Gold. That's the one that I just did. Oh, that one you just did. All right. Um, oh, and somebody said, you and CD are awesome together. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a really good time. Oh. Uh, I'm not a musician, and I'm in this group. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to be either matured or a musician. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> you just have to like our, our local people. And, and I, I sometimes go to Oregon and California to draw people as well. So, um, and they come up here and they perform. So what the heck I include them. Absolutely. I'm still working on, on getting Michael Powers. I don't know if you know him. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, well, I don't know him, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I know. I've seen he comes him. jams. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The cool guy. He's from Arizona. So that's oh. included too. <laughs> Arizona. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if he plays with, with uh, Charles Mack. Well, you got me. I don't know. Uh, he usually comes down here and plays with the gems I go to. So um, I've got a limited scope. <laughs> so also, if you know anybody like this person you're talking about that you're going to perform with, uh, shoot me an email so I can look them up and get them on. I got February open, so I'm looking for people to come on the show at this oh, he, time. He would so, probably be interested. Okay. So would Perfect. Raphael, for that matter. I think Raphael Trancolino is doing some really interesting things. In the I know of him. Is he, he, is he? Does he do Spanish music? or Not is he, no. Raphael, does he do no. rock? Rock and rock yeah, and blues I know. Yeah. with yeah. Uh, fusion. He's, yeah. yeah, he's been to other jams. I've heard him. He's quite a quite a player. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you got for um? So coming up, coming yeah. up. Oh yeah. So I told you about my Friday dinner show with CD Woodbury, and then the following Sunday, that's the twenty second uh, of January. For those of you who are watching this next week, sorry you missed it. Uh, <laughs> Sunday, the 22nd, I'll be at the Spar Tavern. In Where, which one? The Spar. There's one up in Granite Falls. This one's in Tacoma. Tacoma, okay. Tacoma Spar in Tacoma. <laughs> and it's one of my favorite places to play. It's wonderful. Uh, so that's what I've got this week. And then the next day I get on a plane and I go to Memphis. And I'll be okay. in Memphis for a couple of days. Going to do a couple of shows. Uh, one in Clarksdale and then one in Memphis. So I'll be down that way for a few that's days. Fun. Coming back. Oh, that sounds like fun, Joel. Yeah. yeah put that out there so we know we can follow you. You know, these shows that uh, artists do, you know, it'd be really nice if you could guys could stream them as well as perform there because the folks back home would love to hear what, what's happening. And, and it's, they never seem to do that, but maybe someday in the future. I was just thinking about that because I just finished setting up my YouTube channel and I haven't really done anything yet. Uh -huh. Well, maybe I'll try that on um, Sunday. Maybe I'll yeah. try. Do you know, do you know Lyle Rundling or Rogling? Yes. Yeah. He used to play for uh, uh, Jessica Lynn Whitty. Uh, he does that uh, every now and then he'll, he'll do that at a show. And it's so much fun because, you know, you may not be able to get there for whatever reason. And you get to see them in the, you know, in their live, in their element. Yeah. The artists. So. Yeah, it would definitely depend on the venue. Um, if it was a ticketed event, for instance, I might not do that. Right. The venue was. Right. I'd check with the venue and see if it's yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. I don't get you in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Jessica um, used to play at the airport. I met her. Um, I used to sit in with her when she was playing. Oh. <laughs> she would do a little solo set. Oh, cool. Yeah, oh. she she's kind of uh, stopped touring for the moment. 
And she's working on some stuff with her husband, Raymond Hayden. Cool. Yeah. And it's rock stuff. So uh, I, I'm kind of looking forward to things that they're good, they've are they been producing. So anybody wants to know, it's called Grieve the Astronaut since Raymond Hayden. So he's on Facebook and he's on YouTube. And Jessica Lynn Whitty, she's country gal going both rock and country. So back to you. Do you have um, any artwork that you're working on that isn't finished that you'd like to show us? Sorry. I was just looking at the comments. It said YouTube doesn't have this interview yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's live. <laughs> I don't know why it's, it's not. You have to look under YouTube live or something. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. It probably. I I'm sorry, people. I don't. I kind of leave that out there for people to stumble across and find because this broadcast goes worldwide and it's digital. So uh, I, I apologize for that. I'll look <laughs> into that and do my homework, I think. But the primary station is Matured Musicians. And the reason I do that is to get members. And the more people that you guys get watching you, and, you know, because these also live on YouTube after they're done. Uh, the more support you have, the better it is for everyone. So that's primarily the reason. So we have um, about 10 minutes, nine minutes, something like that to finish. And I, I, I was asking you if you had any, any unfinished artwork. And the other thing I'd like to know if you've got any songs that you're uh, working on to bring in the future and when you think you might be, they might be finished and where we can find all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Right now, I'm working on a commission uh, for a dear friend of mine who just got married, and they're having a reception this summer. Um, and uh, this is going to be on the uh, on. They're going to make custom wine labels that go onto the bottles, and they'll be put on every table. And so, this is kind of like the beginning of this uh, portrait. It's going to be abstracted. So that'll be that looks fun. Yeah, a double portrait, and then I'm gonna have the background be like um, mountains, and uh, they're they're avid hikers, and so I'm gonna uh, yeah. like the northwest. Uh, great, well, yeah, theme, yeah, that's great, love it. What about your albums? What are you working on? So I was in the Bay Area early last year, in May of last year. And I recorded at Greaseland Studios with the great Kid Anderson. And um, <clears throat> and that was uh, with his crew. That was June Core, Randy Bermudez, uh, Johnny Bergen, and some backup people. <laughs> oh, these are all uh, blues musicians okay. who are prominent on the on the West Coast scene. Ah, okay. And and uh, Kid Anderson is is a tremendous um, producer. Um, he's just a very renowned. Anyway, I, I've been wanting to record with them for a long time, and it happened last year. It finally. <laughs> so I have the masters; they're ready to put together. And right now, I'm shopping labels and just kind of trying to figure out what what I want to do with them. Wonderful, wonderful. Do tell us on I'm Matured Musicians so that we can listen to you and okay, and bye. I will. <laughs> Absolutely, I will. <laughs> All right. So in closing, um, you know, you come, we've come a long way from how you started and how you got into harmonica playing in the blues and your artwork. Do you have any advice for people coming up in the blues world or any other type of music that are starting out? Um, I know a few young players right now that are, that are working it out and, uh, there are people here that listen to these after they come home from work or whenever because yeah. they work during the day. So do you have any advice based yeah. on your, all your travels and et cetera? Uh, so I, I think, I think I, um, gosh, yes, I do have advice and I'm, it would be different for every person. I would give different advice to different people you know, depending on where they're at and who they are. Um, if somebody has um, a real gift for, um, if they're particularly likable or they have a gift for networking, 
I would say absolutely leaning, lean into that as much as you can. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you got to be, you got to be ready to back it up with, you know, something interesting. You got to be mm -hmm. saying something interesting, something unique. Um, I did some touring with a, a, a well-established blues artist, a couple of different tours over the last couple of years. And his advice to me uh, was just double down on everything, Joel, you know, cause I felt like, Oh, cause he's so established. He's such a traditional uh, blues artist and he has such a big name that I felt like I need to do. I had in my mind something that I was supposed to be doing. And he's like, mm -hmm. let all that go and do what you do and double down. And what do you that's, mean double down. Can you flesh that the, out a little? Um, yeah. Like, um, like, like don't half step, don't doubt yourself. Just, go all in and then go all in again yeah, <laughs> Put yeah. It at the table like you're at a like you're at the blackjack table right yeah. just double down like pull out your wallet and put, put down in there. everything you've got yeah right throw Good your advice hot. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so what was the worst time that you've ever experienced um in your travels and in your music journey <sighs> Or wasn't there any? <laughs> there, there have been too many, um, too many low points. Um, but I would say that one of the scariest moments as a singer that I've ever had was yesterday. Oh, no. Oh, your voice went out. <laughs> oh. I had... Um, I had a bug all last week, I had a sore throat and yeah, you know, and I, I thought, okay, well, I've got this gig and I, I texted my voice teacher who I run big decisions by. And, um, she was like, is there any way you can sub this gig? And I said, <laughs> I texted her back and said, I really don't want to, I really like this room and I want to do this gig. And looking back, I probably should have. Uh -huh. The wise move would be to just sub the sub the gig and live to fight another day. Yeah. But I, I played the gig, and by the end of the night, I was in as bad a voice as I've ever been in my career. And I woke up the next day, I couldn't talk. And oh, so my gosh. Day, I was in bed all day yesterday, all day today, trying to stay all quiet. <laughs> right? Like that would, that's the code is just S T F U. That's what she would text me. If it's I mean, rest your voice, S T F U stands for rest your voice. <laughs> so how did your, what happened to your audience? What they, were they aware of what was going on? I made it, I made it through. True. <laughs> keep on, keep on. Oh, keep man. on keeping on. <laughs> yeah. But by the end of the night, it was like, oh, I knew I was hitting on thin ice. Oh, but you yeah. know what? You recovered pretty rapidly. I mean, yeah, you had a down day. but And and yes, it's probably going to go on for a couple of days or more. But the thing is, you got through it. And that's amazing that you, you know, I think that I, I respect artists that come up against all these challenges when they're out there and and manage to um, slog through it. Like I, Jessica Lynn Whitty for for while she was on tour, had some problems with her voice and she was going hoarse. And mm -hmm. um, she got some, she had a, a gal that used to play with her called Serk, Serka. And uh, um, I'm trying to think of her last name right now. I got a mental block. But anyway, um, Cherokee. And she she's also a voice teacher. And so she gave her some tips on what to do for her throat and came through it. And apparently you have some tips too, because I see you sipping that stuff and it seems to work. So, bravo. Bravo for people who don't give up. And, you know, they, I don't think it did any permanent damage. I'm not a doctor, but it doesn't sound like you're going to, you know, be... <laughs> hurting forever so uh, thank you for doing that and thank you for sharing your persistence with us and your story so we have no more time i can't believe it went so fast all right 
So I do want to thank you so much, Joe, for coming on this show. And um, I loved having you. I love working with you. You're so easy all the way through. <laughs> so I don't know if I can get to your gigs. I got a lot of gigs I'm supposed to go to all the time. And I don't have the time or the energy oh, most I, of the time. Oh, I'm in the same boat. You yeah. Know? yeah. I wish I could go out to everybody's shows every week. <sighs> yeah. I just I can't. Yeah. Um, I do see some comments that I want to respond to. Oh, please do. Please do. If you don't mind going over, we I don't have a problem with it. Okay, great. Yep. Casey and Chuck, hugs right back to you guys. Um, that was the one. Um, Don, thank you for being here. Thanks, everybody, who's not showing up as a, as a named user. A lot of them are just coming up that they just says Facebook user. So I just want to thank everybody for coming. and. Uh, yeah, it's been really cool. Patrick, thank you. Patrick De, um, from uh, Dublin Abbey uh, just wrote a good interview. Thank you, Patrick. We appreciate Thanks. that. So I guess, is there any more there, Joel? Thank nope, you, that, that was it. All right. Well, uh, just just for your knowledge, uh, you have had the most viewers uh, so far on screen live that oh. I've had for a long time. <laughs> And I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Do post on, on Facebook at Matured Musicians Group. I will. And please send a, send me any recommendations of people that you think would like to be interviewed. I will. I'll look them up. Cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks again. All right. Enjoy Thanks the for... rest of your week. Bye, Joel. Bye. Well, that finishes our, our program for today. Next week, I actually know the people's names that will be here. It is the Jekylls. It will be Jerry Batista and Kelly Van Camp. And they're a duo that go out and perform. I love those two guys. They're a lot of fun. They will be at 2 o'clock next uh, Monday. Do join us. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We did hit a thousand people on Matured Musicians, and I want to thank all of you for that. And in the meantime, you have a good rest of your week. I'll see you next Monday. Bye.